Welcome to my series of videos on managerial economics. And in this particular video, I'm going to explain to you a concept in market dynamics called public goods and externalities. Now, one of the roles of every government in an economy is to sometimes step into the market process to improve market outcomes. Therefore, without the interference of government, there can be a market failure that is caused by the demand side, and there can be a market failure that is caused by the supply side. A typical example of market failure that is caused by the demand side is public goods, whilst a typical example of market failure that is caused by the supply side is externalities. So in this particular video, uh, our discussion is going to center on externalities. So externality is basically a market failure that is caused by a supply side. Now, let me begin with externalities by giving this scenario. Suppose a firm produces test house, and this firm, out of the production of test house, they come out with, or part of their production process, at the, or at the end of their production process, they come out with a waste product. Now the firm has two options to deal with the waste product. One of the options is to treat the waste product as external to the firm. So when they treat it as external to the firm, what it means is that they can go and dump it into a river. Another option is that the firm, even though this waste product can be treated as external to the firm, Another option is that they can actually internalize this externality by finding ways to deal with the waste product within the firm so that um, it doesn't go out to spoil or create environmental harm. So in this sense, we can define an externality as a cost or a benefit that is caused by a producer. And that cost or benefit if it's a cost, it is not financially incurred by the producer. If it's a benefit, it is not financially received by that producer. So for instance, um, like the example I was giving earlier, this waste product that comes out of their production process, it actually represents a cost if the firm would have to spend money on it to deal with it within the firm so that it doesn't go outside to create environmental harm. Now, this means that if the firm goes to dump these waste products into a river nearby, they have rather caused a cost to the environment or those who have their livelihood based on the river. Now, this also means that an externality can be something positive or an externality can be something negative. So in simple terms, a positive externality is a benefit, which is caused by a producer, but that is not financially received by that producer. Whilst a negative externality is a cost caused by the producer, but not financially incurred by that producer. This means that when we have a positive externality, it is enjoyed by those who are not part of the production process. And when it is a negative externality, it is suffered by those who are not part of the production process for the commodity. Now, what is the effect of externality? Now, before then, I want us to learn that in discussing externalities, it is good to note that most of the externalities that occurs in the marketplace is actually negative externality. Notwithstanding, there could also be positive externality, but most of the externalities that occurs in the marketplace is actually a negative externality. Now, assuming a firm creates waste products out of their production process, and they go and dump these waste products freely into a nearby river. 
What it means is that it is going to reduce its cost of production. Why would the firm's cost of production reduce? The firm's cost of production will reduce because this firm is not paying or is not finding ways to deal with those externalities within their firm. In fact, if they have to deal with this waste product within their firm, what it, what it simply means is that the firm is going to incur more marginal cost of producing the product. Now, the other implication of this is that once firms can freely dump this waste product into a nearby river, they have the incentive to always produce more because even if they produce more and it comes out with more waste product, they still don't incur the cost of dealing with the waste product within the firm. Now, even though creating negative externalities to the environment benefits the firm, it actually represents a major cost to the society or people that have their livelihood from or people that have their livelihood from a river assuming a firm dumps waste product into a river. So what this means is that the society will pay an extra price. Apart from purchasing the goods and services, they will still pay an extra price. Why? Because if those goods and services that, that is produced by the firm is purchased by society, that alone is a cost. On the other hand, the extent to which they also suffer from the environmental pollution also represents a cost. So with time, what happens is that the market is going to fail. The market is going to fail because the supply side is not producing efficiently. What this means is that the supply side is not finding ways to deal with the externalities, but they are just freely dumping it into a nearby river or they are freely releasing these negative externalities into the environment. So there are, even though they have incentive to produce more because they don't have to spend on dealing with the waste product within the firm, on the other hand, the consumers will have less incentive to buy the product because apart from purchasing the product, they also suffer the environmental consequences from the production of the product. So if government does not step in over time, the demand side is going to stop demanding the commodity and the market is going to fail. So this means that the market failure, even though it's coming up because the demand side is refusing to demand the product, that behavior or that incentive was triggered by the supply side. That is why externalities is a failure caused by the supply side. Now, how can government deal with externalities? So one of the ways a government can deal with externalities is to have a well-defined property right. Now, what this means is that if government defines who has the right to own a certain river, who has the right to own a certain environment, who has the right to own a certain land, what it means is that firms cannot create externalities to the river, firms cannot create externalities to the environment, firms cannot create externalities to the land. Now, because of this, the best way government can deal with the problem of externality is to define itself to be the owner of the environment. Now, once government defines itself to be the owner of the environment, what it means is that the firms would have to find ways to internalize the externalities. And when I say firms have to find ways to internalize the externalities, what this means is that if it's a negative externality, the firm will incur more cost of production because apart from their normal marginal cost of production, they have to also spend extra to deal with the externality per every product that they produce because every product is going to generate waste product. So it means that if they are being forced to internalize the externality, and if the externality is negative, what it means is that the firm is going to incur more cost of production. If it is 
a positive externality, what it means is that the firm is going to get added benefits to their revenues. So that is the other side. If they are being asked to internalize a positive externality, it means that they are going to get more benefit to their existing benefit. Now, let's define some key terms here before we get to the calculation. So I want us to note that when a firm does not internalize an externality, in other words, when a firm freely dumps a negative externality into the environment, what it means is that it is not incurring more cost. So here, what I want you to know is, note is that without internalizing an externality, the marginal cost of production is referred to as marginal private cost. So as I said, if a firm does not internalize a negative externality, its marginal cost is referred to as marginal private cost, MPC. So if a firm does not internalize a negative externality, its marginal cost is referred to as marginal private cost. On the other hand, if a firm does not internalize a positive externality, its marginal benefit is referred to as marginal private benefit. So again, if a firm does not internalize a positive externality, its marginal benefit of production is referred to as marginal private benefit or MPB. So usually, just like market structure, anytime a firm, like let's say a firm is a monopolist and they don't internalize a positive externality, it means that their marginal revenue will become their marginal private benefit. And if a firm is a perfect competitor and then they don't internalize a positive externality, then their price function becomes them, their marginal private benefit. Again, I also want us to note that the marginal cost of a negative externality is referred to as marginal external cost, MEC. So the marginal cost of a negative externality is referred to as marginal external cost. So the marginal cost of a negative externality is referred to as marginal external cost. Whilst the marginal benefit of a positive externality is referred to as marginal external benefit, MEB. So the marginal, marginal cost of a negative externality is referred to as marginal external cost whilst the marginal benefit of a positive externality is referred to as marginal external benefit. Now remember, one of the ways that government can deal with the problem of externality is to ask firms to internalize it. So usually, when it is a negative externality and then the firms internalize it, the marginal cost is no longer private, but we call it marginal social cost. So I'm saying that when a firm creates a negative externality and it has to internalize it, or when it internalizes it, their marginal cost is no longer private, but it becomes marginal social cost. On the other hand, when it is a positive externality and a firm is being asked to internalize it, their marginal benefit is no longer private, but their marginal private benefit rather becomes marginal social benefit, marginal social benefit. 
And we use the word social in these two definitions because when a time a firm internalizes an externality, the output that they produce does not create any harm to the society. So it is actually efficient for the society. It doesn't make the society incur more costs in terms of the negative repercussions to the environment, as well as in terms of the money they have to pay, even if they have to buy the commodity. So that's why we use the words social in these two.